today I'd like to do a video on the design strategy of the medical module for my urban bug out bag video series. This is going to be a fairly huge topic so I'm going to probably have to break it up into a, a multi-part mini series to the actual main playlist for the urban bug out bag. Uh, but I feel that medical is such an important part for emergency preparedness. They talk about the big three being food, water, and shelter. I think if you had a big four, it would be food, water, shelter, medical. And this particular uh, video has, has been a large part of collaboration with YouTuber The Mountain RN. I'll put a link to his channel in the description box below. We've been collaborating now for the past nine months or so with regard to medical topics, first aid for emergency kits, and also for just general uh, emergency preparedness planning. And he's just been an absolute great resource for me. Uh, he comes from a medical background. I don't come from a medical background, so I have a lot of questions usually. Some, anytime I have any kind of question or doubt even, uh, the Mountain RN is more than willing to, to provide, okay, this, this is what I believe, and here's five to seven uh, supporting articles that uh, support the, this way of thinking. So <laughs> usually that's a checkmate, and, and I, I like those, those kind of uh, analytics and data to support claims rather than just saying a bunch of stuff without any kind of uh, proof behind the pudding. So I think over the past nine months that we've uh, fine-tuned uh, this particular medical system to something that I, I think works out really well, at least for my needs, and with uh, the Mountain RN's uh, medical knowledge and my uh, slightly obsessive organization skills, I think we've come up with a, a really nice system. So I did a redesign of the medical module for my previous bug out bag for a few different reasons. Uh, basically the previous re uh, version uh, did not incorporate a lot of the latest stuff that I have uh, now with regard to knowledge and uh, equipment and things like that. Uh, the original one was made back in 2011. It's been a while now since then and it's been refined. And I'm always trying to test things and refine things uh, constantly because I feel that uh, if you remain static uh, then you start to become stale. So I want to always want to be keep moving and uh, improving my strategies for not just medical stuff but uh, all aspects of emergency preparedness. Uh, one of the main things I wanted to integrate uh, what I had in the color of prepping. I wanted to have a red medical module instead of a black one. The previous one was a black uh, Maxpedition uh, kit, uh, which was which was good, but I wanted to make sure that I really uh, leveraged that color of prepping. Uh, second, I wanted to leverage a lot of the modern wound dressings that we talked about previously with uh, the Mountain RN. Uh, I just wanted to get less away from gauze and more towards that modern wound dressings because gauze is mainly absorbs blood and the modern wound dressings uh, really fill in the gap that you have in a wound to help uh, stop the bleeding itself, So, which I th think is a, a better strategy. Uh, previously with uh, the medical module, it was more of a free-for-all. So you had, everything was you know organized in here uh, for the most part, but and then it was kind of a free-for-all once you opened it up and you had to kind of find everything. I didn't want to have that. Oftentimes with even Adventure Medical Kits and other uh, store-bought kits, it's a, it's a bag filled with medical supplies and you kind of have to know where to go. I didn't want to do that, so I wanted to do a much better job in the organization of it and then basically have an additional layer of organization uh, to work as a complete system with not just my bug-out bag, with all of my emergency preparedness measures. Before digging down to the details, I figured we should do a disclaimer. So I have a few different topics to talk about. So uh, number one, uh, medical stuff, first aid stuff, it requires training. Uh, it's like buying a guitar. You can't just buy a guitar and a music book and expect to be able to play it. You actually have to practice it a lot. And the same thing goes with uh, medical stuff. So uh, there are a lot of different training options available. For example, I take some uh, training courses through my work yearly uh, and the CPR classes, general first aid uh, classes and whatever other else they have there. So uh, there's options available at uh, companies uh, REI, for example, your local community, uh, fire department, things like that. So, and uh, medical stuff, it's an ongoing process. It's never going to stop for me. I'm going to always have to take new classes. Uh, for me, it's kind of like comms, uh, my comms module and comms uh, topics. It's just something that's always going to have to be going on uh, with me because it's so vast of a topic. So I recommend learning from professionals. Don't learn from someone like me. I'm not a professional. I'm just a, a study from professionals. Uh, and I, I prefer professionals that are they're experts that want to just share the knowledge, not like make money off of it. Oftentimes you'll see, uh, well, here's uh, the topic that we're going to discuss. And if you take my course now for $500, you could uh, learn even more of that. I, I, I don't, I'm not as interested in that. So uh, Many of the items in my medical module are, are nice items, but they're expensive. Uh, when you start getting to quality medical items, the price really goes up. So uh, buying in bulk is uh, the best way of reducing cost. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail later. Um, I'm going to include the pharmacy items in a separate video. Uh, I've kind of broken that out from the medical module to more of like a pharmacy kit. So, and I'm still kind of refining that. And again, the module is under constant uh, refinement. I'm trying, always trying to slim it and get better with the organization. So what 
you're going to see in this video, it'll probably change a week from now. And that's just kind of expected. Again, I don't want to remain static. And then uh, lastly, uh, survival isn't sterile. Oftentimes, I think uh, myself and others, we get caught up in having everything sterile. Uh, and in an emergency situation, it's probably not going to be, you're not going to be in a lab coat in a completely sterile uh, hospital room or anything like that. So, um, some of the organization methods that I use aren't completely sterile, uh, but I don't feel that survival is sterile. Now let's talk about a few of the problems that I have with the uh, store-bought first aid kits and then general uh, medical info. Uh, number one, most of the time, uh, the store-bought kits are going to be mass-produced for profit. So it includes a lot of cheap items in there like gauze, uh, which take up a lot of space. You could have a very large kit that's mostly filled with gauze, which is very inexpensive and sold at a premium price. So a lot of higher quality medical gear is omitted because there's not a good way of make, making a profit of, from it, uh, regardless of if, if it's better to include in the medical kit or not. And so that's why I'm kind of leaning more towards you know buying the stuff in bulk of the higher quality gear when I can. Uh, so again with the store-bought medical kits oftentimes you don't have intimate knowledge of your gear and where everything is located versus if you make it yourself. I always recommend making your own medical kits because you're going to know uh, the exact details on everything that's included in there, why you included in there, uh, versus just buying one from a, a store like REI. And most of the time the store-bought ones are going to be uh, in a single container like a bag and it's going to be a free-for-all with regard to organization. Everything's going to be in the same bag and and you're going to have to kind of figure out where it's at. Uh, again, I, I like knowing where things are at because in an emergency situation, I don't want to have to think about things too much. So there are some exceptions, uh, which uh, those exceptions are the ones that inspired my redesign with regard to organization and gear that's included. Um, uh, oftentimes, I think with a general medical info, uh, the information and training is given uh, with the intent of selling you additional training courses for uh, a lot, a lot of money. Uh, and I'm not as into that. I, I, you know, I come from a computer background in the software community, you know, you have open source software. So I. I treat uh, all of this emergency preparedness stuff kind of like an open source software project where it's not for making money it's just for sharing knowledge and collaborating with people and uh, i kind of lean more towards that than uh, having the intent of uh, making money off of it so um uh, next is, uh, I've talked about this a lot with the Mountain RN with regard to the, the lack of accountability with survival medical treatment. Uh, there's no license needed for it. Uh, so, and if a survival situation were to ever happen, uh, most people haven't been in a survival situation. Uh, and so, but there's no really accountability. There's no checks and balances on whether the stuff that you were saying that you should do it was the right thing to do or not. Uh, because again, again, it's an emergency survival situation. So uh, I just, I'm always apprehensive of uh, that kind of information. I prefer leaning toward more towards uh, medical professionals at a, at a real hospital. <laughs> so uh, again, these are all my current personal thoughts and they're subject to change. Uh, they'll probably change tomorrow. Again, if you remain st uh, static, you start to go stale. So I'm always trying to refine uh, my current thoughts and knowledge of, of medical stuff. And then last, uh, some of the items in uh, the kit are gonna be expensive. They're, uh, I was kind of thinking it'd be, be really cool if there was like a YouTube medical co-op uh, that'd be a good community approach to including modern wound dressings affordably uh, for, for kits. So that might be something to talk about at a future date. And that's everything I wanted to list regarding some of the problems I have with uh, store-bought medical kits and just general info. All right, now that we've gotten all that out of the way, now let's discuss my particular strategy for uh, my medical module. It's going to be very similar to what uh, you're going to be seeing from the Mountain RN's channel. Uh, we're on the same page with, the, with regard to a lot of the equipment to include in the organization strategy of it. Uh, but we do have some differences in there. Uh, so basically what I'm going to be doing for my strategy of my medical module is treat it as a two-part system, very similar to what I did to the food module for my bug out bag. In that food module, I had kind of a grab and go snacks module of quick uh, snacks that I could eat on the run. And then uh, I had the main food module, uh, which had more of the entrees in there. And I'm going to go with the same approach with my medical module, where I'm going to have a quick grab and go module that's going to have uh, some basic stuff in there uh, for more of like the boo-boo type things, uh, but also some CPR tourniquet type stuff in a real small compact uh, a module that's grab and go that could be thrown into a smaller ver backpack. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in a future video with having more of a collapsible backpack included in your bug out bag where you can put some of these smaller modules in there. And then I'm going to have that main uh, medical module that's going to have the majority of the gear in there and uh, it have a lot more capabilities in here versus the grab and go. Uh, but it's going to be working at that kind of system. 
I'm gonna be treating the gear in the main medical module, very similar to an office file cabinet. And we're all probably familiar with file cabinets. You basically have a main drawers. Uh, you could have a few different drawers on it. And that main drawer is usually a category. So for example, something like taxes. You'll have a taxes drawer that you could pull out and go to all the individual items. And those individual items are usually file folders uh, with specific items for that category, like 2011 taxes, 2012 taxes and receipts, things like that. I'm gonna be going with the same approach for my medical model module where I have a main category like first aid or trauma and then I have individual file folders for particular categories uh, like uh, burns, uh, bleeding, wound care, uh, fracture sprains. Those are going to be my file folders of my medical cabinet. So for the main drawers of my medical file cabinet, I'm gonna be using a zipper compartments of a storage cube. This one is an Eagle Creek one. You guys know I like my Eagle Creek. This is the Eagle, Eagle Creek tra Travel Gear Packet Dirty and Clean Cube. It's in red for the color of prepping, and I kind of have drawers in it. So there's basically uh, one zippered area for clean stuff, one for dirty. It's usually meant for clothes, like dirty clothes, clean clothes. I'm gonna be using them as file cabinets. So I have a first aid file cabinet, and I have one that's more trauma, so more, uh, very emergency type stuff, bleeding type things, fractures, and the other one's more of a first aid file cabinet. So for the file folders of my medical file cabinet, I'm gonna be using these lock sack bags. Uh, over the years, I've obtained a good amount of uh, lock sack bags, and I finally found a good opportunity to use them. Uh, they're just awesome bags. They're waterproof, they're airtight, and they're extremely durable. So all the items of a particular medical category are included in their own uh, folder or a lock sack bag. So the folders are gonna be labeled and assigned a color outside of the color of prepping topics. So for example, uh, here's a folder over here uh, for wound care. We have all those blue stickers over here. I have a blue one on the back. Uh, that's going to mean wound care. On this other one over here, I have it labeled with burns. We have a color orange for it, and uh, that's going to be my uh, burns uh, file folder. And so the colors are based off of a large uh, medical kit that's made by Adventure Medical Kits. It's one of their marine kits, which included sub modules very similar to this, although that particular kit was for like boats, where it's like a suitcase size and had huge modules in there uh, that were color coordinated. I went with a similar type approach but went with more file cab file folder uh, type size for the categories. So uh, each folder is a module that's color coordinated. So now let's list those subcategories for the file folders of the medical file cabinet. Uh, and again, they're based off of uh, an Adventure Medical Kits Marine kit that's the, like the Marine 3000, I think is what it is, which is like a $700 uh, suitcase size uh, medical kit. Uh, so we're going to have a category for wound care, which is going to be the color blue. We're going to have a category for bleeding, uh, which will be the color red, red for blood. Uh, we're going to have a medications that's going to be uh, in the color yellow. That's going to be in my ph uh, pharmacy module, which is going to be a separate video. Uh, we have orange for burn. We have for fractures and sprains, we're going to have purple be the color for that. We'll have a particular category for CPR instruments, uh, which will be green. And then the last uh, kind of wild card cate category color will be for tools and also for dental stuff, and that's going to be black. So that's an exact one-to-one uh, -one matching to that Adventure Medical uh, Marine kit, uh, but I'm going to be applying it to my the medical file cabinet. So the next video of this mini medical video series as part of my Urban Bug Out Bag uh, playlist is gonna be of that grab and go uh, medical bag. Again, this is a very basic first aid kit, has some uh, basic wound care type stuff in addition to some of the CPR and also like tourniquet type stuff. So uh, we're gonna discuss that in more detail in the next video. Following that video, we'll deep dive into the main medical module that's really gonna leverage uh, that file cabinet design uh, with the file folders based off of each category. So those will be the next uh, videos in this uh, little mini video series. That's gonna do it for this video featuring the design strategy of the medical module for my Urban Bug Out Bag video series. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. So as you can see, uh, just medical stuff is just, we just touched the tip of the iceberg on it. It's just such a vast topic to go over, but I wanted to talk about it in a little bit more detail before going into the individual gear. Uh, again, the gear is not as important as uh, that knowledge and training of the topics. So I'm looking forward to talking with you guys in the comment section uh, with regard to uh, emergency preparedness, medical topics, first aid and uh, again treating it like an open source software project where it's more of a collaboration between uh, many different people from various points of view uh, for the good of the entire community and that's kind of the strategies that I'm planning on going forward with so again the next video in the video series this little mini video series is going to be that grab and go module uh, that's more of like a boo-boo kit and then the other one's going to be the main medical module which I kind of designed similar to a file cabinet uh, with individual file folders for the various medical categories again I'll have 
have the PDF document in the description box below that you can download. A special shout out to the Mountain RN. Uh, uh, he's been just awesome to collaborate with. So I'm gonna include a link to his channel in the description box below. And in addition, in the PDF document, there'll be uh, links to individual videos that he has on various topics discussed uh, with regard to different medical gear and things like that. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'll leave your comments below in the comment section and let's talk more regarding medical for the design strategy of my urban bug out bag. Looking forward to seeing you in the comment section and stay tuned for the next video. See you guys.